For the fourth time this year, the Bengals are in prime time. It's the second time they are on the most watched show on television, Sunday Night Football. And that means my buddy Mike Tirico will be in the booth for NBC. Mike, the Bengals are a game out of the final playoff spot in the AFC. How do you plan to frame the importance of this game for Cincinnati when you sign out on Sunday night? It's not a must, but it is, right? Um, It's not a must because there's no mathematical elimination, any of that stuff. All of a sudden, if you get the Chargers to six and four, and then you're sitting at five and six, let's forget the imbalance of the number of games, but now you're looking at the loss column, go, okay, now we're within two of these guys and have a head-to-head against them. It just shortens the deck a little bit. So mathematically in the big scope of the AFC playoff picture, which I guess we're starting to see on TV now, right? That's how you know it's getting cold. Uh, If you live in the Northeast or you live in the North, rather, the golf courses start to put temporary greens out and play is less plentiful, and the playoff picture shows up on TV. You're in that mix if you get a win in the AFC against one of those other teams in the mix. I think it's not a must win, but it is for the Bengals. Mike, you've been doing NFL games on primetime for about 20 years. Have you seen a better combo than Burrow to Chase? It's, I, I think, Dan, what maybe puts it in a unique place in space is they're both making spectacular plays. The ability to stand in the pocket and deliver on past 48 and 52 when you've been beaten up all night, that jumps out to you. And Chase, on the business end, there there's almost nobody. You start going through how good – the receiver group is right now in the NFL. I don't think I'd rather a ball be thrown to anybody but Jamar Chase right now. I watched all the Chase catches from the year earlier today, and you just go, speed, yes, strong hands, hands catch, uh, catch on the run, work his way open, physical contact, double teams. It's like every box possible for, will the receiver catch against these circumstances? He's checking every single one. You and Chris had the Bengals-Giants back in Week 6. Cincinnati held New York to seven points in that win. It's their best defensive performance of the year. The Giants' offense obviously has something to do with that. But did you see anything that night that makes you think, all right, if the Bengals can do this a little bit better defensively, they've got a chance in the last seven? The Chargers are an interesting team because Herbert contested. I mean, Herbert and Burrow, if the game gets bad, I think we should just stop it at halftime and just let those guys just show off their arms. Because it's two of the greatest throwing shows you'll see in the NFL. And there's a ball Herbert threw in a game last year that I still can't believe he completed uh, against Miami. And we've seen Joe do it like I was talking about before. But the Chargers are playing hardball. It's just like kind of rough and tumble. And here comes a defensive lineman. We've turned into a fullback. And we're going to make him into you know the same kind of piece that Patrick Ricard is in Baltimore. Jim Harbaugh has a way of kind of making a physical, tough team come together. And that was never, ever what you said about the Chargers. But in nine games, you do because of hardball. Like, if Herbert needs to throw, he can throw. And Quentin Johnston has been good. Joshua Palmer was good with injuries a few years ago. He's good. And Lad McConkey has done a very nice job as a rookie coming in. So if they need to sit back and throw, they've got the people to do it, and the quarterback's got the arm to do it, which means – The Bengals' corners might not be tested as much as they will against other people, but they better be ready because this can morph into an explosive offense if they so choose. The Chargers are giving up 13 points a game. Nobody scored 20 on them yet. Now, they haven't faced a top-10 scoring offense to this point of the season. Is that the big story? Burrow, Chase, hopefully Higgins versus that great Chargers D. It it is in large part, and I think one of the big stories with that is the edge pressure that the Chargers bring. You know, the Chargers, you think of, well, it's Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, and we've seen those guys for a lot of years, and they're both very good, and we know what they can do over the years. But all of a sudden, Tui Tui Pelotu, who played for them last year, he's been an effective pass rusher. And Bud Dupree, who he's come in and given them a factor. So when you can roll four guys in there, now you've got something. And I think that's been the basis for a lot of what they've done same defensive coordinator that we saw, Jesse Minter, who the Minter family is very well known to the Cincinnati folk uh, from Rick's days at UC. Uh, Jesse's just, it's a, it's a solid defense. It's a solid defense with a piece in Derwin James playing uh, what's become, I think, Dan, one of the coolest positions in the NFL slot corner. I wonder who the best slot corner is in the AFC. I mean, you guys see Mike Hilton on a regular basis. 
We saw Kenny Moore with the Colts. We see Taron Johnson with the Bills. We saw uh, Houston and Petrie last week. That position has become populated with some really good players. And they've got one in Derwin James, who they finally, I think, have found the right role for on this team. So that's a guy who's going to be nosing around to try to take away any easy throws for Joe. This is a good defense, but like you said, now you step into the deep end against uh, his dynamic and offenses there is in the league throwing the ball can you keep them to 13 14 points looking forward to seeing you my friend thanks so much for your time we'll see you on sunday travel safe pal